Hi, I'm Jay with Wilcox, and today we're going to be talking about the Murph XE, the Micro Range Finder. Equipped with a laser range finder, visible laser, applied ballistic solver, and Kestrel compatibility, the Murph is the ideal solution for long range engagements where speed and accuracy are key. The Murph is capable of ranging and providing an accurate ballistic solution for a low visibility target at 2,000 meters. For larger, higher visibility targets, the MRF can range up to 3,000 meters. On board the MRF is a visible laser for boresight, the laser rangefinder, and the ballistic computer. This has allowed us to streamline the unit to create a minimal footprint on the selected weapons platform. When the unit arrives, it's going to come packaged, shrink-wrapped, and in a slipcase. On that slipcase, we've got a Wilcox hologram that identifies it as a genuine Wilcox product. Let's open it up and take a look and see what's inside. When you open the box for the Murph XE, the first thing that you're going to find is the product card. The product card lists the feature highlights of the unit itself and a QR code to take you to the Wilcox website. After the product card, we have the MRF itself. This pouch has been sealed at the factory with this tag that includes the serial number for the unit inside. We'll remove that tag, and the first thing that we'll do is open up the front pouch of the unit. Inside, we have accessories for mounting the unit, as well as the three-button Ergocto pressure pad. Following that, we have the MRF itself. The MRF is going to ship with a protective cover over the battery cap so as not to damage the unit during shipping. When the Murph XE ships, it comes with a 20 inch Ergocto three button pressure pad. Also available is a dual cable so you can operate a white light or a shorter 12 inch Ergocto three button pressure pad. Finally, included in the pouch, you're going to find the maintenance equipment for the unit, starting with the lens pen, the cleaning cloth, and the XE tool. The XE tool is going to assist with mounting procedures for the unit. We're gonna provide a quick overview of some of the features of the MRF XE. We'll start with the optical bench of the unit. Protected by the laser safety cover, we'll pull it back and that shows us the laser emitter. It's a visible red laser, low power for boresight operations. We have the laser rangefinder emitter, and receiver in the center of the unit. The elevation adjuster is located on the top of the unit and the windage adjuster is on the side. You only need to make one adjustment for the entire co-aligned optical bench. Next up, we have the selector switch. The selector switch is going to determine the mode and operation for the unit. Following the selector switch, you have our toggle buttons. The toggle buttons are going to fire the laser rangefinder and the visible laser, as well as make our menu selections. Following that, we have our connection port. The connection port is where we're going to link up our Ergocto three button pressure pad. Above the connection port is the display screen. The display screen is going to provide your range as well as any corrections you need to make. You're also going to be able to cycle through your menu options and engage Bluetooth compatibility. Next to the display screen is going to be your battery compartment. When installing the CR123, ensure that the positive terminal goes down into the unit. When you are installing the battery, ensure that you're applying pressure downward to the cap before you twist. On the bottom of the unit is the Picatinny rail mount. The Picatinny rail mount features these two thumb screws that can be torqued down with the included XE tool. It's also got this loop so that you can tie down the MRF. Finally, on the side of the MRF, you're going to notice that there's a QR code which is going to bring you to the Wilcox website where you can access the manual and quick reference cards. And then there's a port for the blue lockout screw. The blue lockout screw controls the high and low power safety setting. The first selectable mode on the MRF is going to be your range function. The range function, when enabled, is going to provide your range data as well as any corrections that you need to make. It also displays a cant indicator should your weapon be off cant. In order to range the target, you're going to press the center button. When you press the center button, it'll provide a fast and accurate range. However, if you'd like a precision result, 
you're going to press and hold the center button for up to three seconds. Precise ranging increases the dwell time of the LRF to provide an accurate result in challenging conditions such as sand or fog. The next mode on your selector switch is going to be your ballistics menu. As you're navigating the menus, the center button is going to be your select button. Then you can use up and down to either change your options or to scroll to different features and functions. First up in the ballistics is going to be your gun selection. You can input up to 30 guns into the unit. Following your gun selection is going to be your environmental data. The MRF XE is capable of reading all environmental data with the exception of wind, and it's something that you can manually adjust if you need to. Similarly, you can go to the target data. The target data is going to be provided based on your last ranged target, and again, is something that you can manually adjust if you prefer. In the options menu, you're able to select the units of measurement. You can select mixed, English, or metric for our input, and then output is going to be mils, inches, or MOA. The manage guns option is going to allow you to send and receive saved gun data to and from a compatible device. The next mode on the selector switch is going to be your functions menu. The first up is going to be the option to read your battery power level. Following that, we have the brightness. The MRF XE features an onboard ambient light sensor. This is going to be your default setting where it adjusts the menu brightness based on the ambient light. However, should you decide, you can select one of eight brightness modes on the unit and then set that to persist. This means that when you turn the unit off and on, it'll stay at the selected brightness. Next up is the laser blink. The laser blink is going to allow you to adjust the blink rate of the laser so that you can either positively identify targets in the field or identify the user firing the laser. The default for the laser blink is off. If you wish to designate a laser blink for the unit, there are six selectable options. The MRF XE also features a range gate. The range gate is going to set the minimum distance that you can actually range a target. The range gate itself is adjustable in 10 meter increments. The default is 10 meters and it goes out to a maximum of 1000 meters. In the ballistic menu, in the function mode, you're going to find that you have the ability to select MRAD or range only. If you select MRAD, it's going to provide the corrections for you after you've ranged a target. If you select range only, there won't be any corrections, only the distance to the ranged target. The Bluetooth menu is going to allow you to enable or disable Bluetooth functionality. This is going to allow you to pair or disconnect from a compatible device such as a Kestrel. The next menu option is going to be Compass Cal. The compass calibration is an essential function of the MRF XE conducted after it's been mounted on a weapons platform. Display direction is going to allow you to orient the screen of the MRF according to the position that you've mounted the unit on. Available positions are the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. The next option is the screensaver. The screensaver is going to allow you to customize your screen timeout after a period of inactivity. It'll go in half second increments all the way up to 10 seconds, or you can disable it completely for continuous operation. The self-test function is going to allow you to do an onboard diagnostic assessment of the MRF XE to ensure that all systems are running appropriately. The set default menu option is going to allow you to restore the factory defaults. This is going to remove any data that you've input to the unit. After you've selected this option, you're going to turn the unit off then on again, and everything will be restored as the unit had shipped. The event log menu feature is going to record any system errors that might happen during the deployment of the MRF XE. The About menu option is going to contain information related to the serial number of the unit as well as the current revision of firmware that the unit is running. The Depot menu is the last selectable menu feature in the function menu. The depot menu is going to allow you to enable or disable 3.3 volts of power out of the remote port to integrated devices and will be used for future upgrades. The next two functions with the selector switch are going to enable your low and high powered lasers. Operation of the high powered laser is going to be prevented by this blue lockout screw. In order to remove the blue lockout screw, we're going to use the included XE tool. Once you've taken that screw out, you can store it in the side port by the QR code. 
Once that blue lockout screw has been stored, you can now enable the high power laser option on the Murph XE. On the display screen, there's an indicator that's going to let you know what laser selection you've made. If it says ALV, it's aiming low visible. If it's AHV, it's aiming high visible. Once the laser's been activated, it's going to highlight that block of text. In order to activate the laser, you're going to press the top button. If you simply press and hold as soon as you remove your finger, the laser will deactivate. However, if you double tap, the laser will persist until you press that button again. Now that we've covered all the features of the Murph XE, we're going to go over some of the mounting procedures. For the Murph, there are two distinct mounting procedures. One is going to be on the diving board platform that rides above the scope. And then the second one, we're going to mount either on the left or the right side of the rail. We'll front load the unit, get it seated on the diving board and slide it forward. Then you'll tighten the front thumb screw first. And then we're going to use our included XE tool to make sure that we've torqued it down tight enough. We're going to torque it to 30 inch pounds and that's going to allow us to maintain our zero as we're firing. Once the Murph has been tightened down to torque spec, then you're ready to roll. We're going to take the Murph off the diving board and then we're going to mount it to the nine o'clock position. So it'll be on the left side of the rail. Okay, now we can close her up. I'm gonna seat the Murph onto this Picatinny rail adapter. And again, I'm gonna tighten them down, just hand tight. And then the included XE tool, I'll make sure that that's seated correctly. Now that the Murph is in place and torqued correctly, we can add the Picatinny rail adapter. This Picatinny rail adapter is going to allow us to mount our Ergocto three button pressure pad. So the first thing that we're going to do is take the included accessories So one of these accessories is going to be Velcro. This Velcro is going to allow you to mount the three button pressure pad closer to the trigger finger if that's your preferred position. And then we have the Picatinny rail adapter. This has tracks that the Ergocto pressure pad is going to slide into. So with that, we'll take out the arms that are included with it. So two screws, the arms and the included Allen key. And then we're going to seat the arms first. And once we've done that, we'll insert our screws. After that, we're going to take our pressure pad. On the back of the pressure pad, are these rails. We're going to interface them with those rails that are on the Picatinny adapter. Slide that forward. With the three button pressure pad in place, we're able to use the included zip ties to make sure that we can manage our cables to our preference. So now we're going to remove the connector cap and then mate the three button pressure pad with the MRF. We'll push it until it clicks. When we remove it, we're going to slip the collar on the pressure pad back and then pull. With the Murph XE mounted, we're going to talk about our compass calibration, co-alignment of the unit, pairing with the Kestrel, and then finally ranging the unit. The first step for compass calibration for your Murph XE is going to be selecting F on the unit itself. With F selected, we're going to scroll down to compass cal. Once we get to compass cal, we'll press enter. When we've pressed enter, it's going to instruct us to rotate the unit on the weapon through three dimensional planes. Once we've done that, we'll press enter again, and then it'll tell us if it's passed or failed that compass calibration. With our compass calibration complete, now we're going to talk about the co-alignment procedures for the MRF XE.
We're going to take our selector switch and select AH. Then we're going to double tap the forward button so that our laser persists. Once we've done that, we're going to take a look through our scope and then we'll use our fix it stick to make our adjustments to the Murph XE to put our laser in the center of our reticle. With our co-alignment complete, the next step is going to be to pair the unit with the Kestrel. We're going to take our selector switch and move it all the way down to F. Once we get to F, the function menu, we're going to scroll down to Bluetooth. When we get to Bluetooth, we're going to hit our enter button, and then we're going to select enable and enter again. When the Bluetooth is enabled, the letter B is going to show over our battery power level indicator. The next step is going to be to take our Kestrel turn the unit on, and then activate the Bluetooth on the Kestrel itself, and then select Device Connect. The MRF is going to show up as WXMRL, and then the serial number of the unit that we have mounted on our weapon. Once the MRF has been paired with the Kestrel, the status is going to show Connected on the Kestrel, and then the B over the battery power level indicator is going to shift to a K on the MRF itself. With the Kestrel paired, now we're going to talk about our gun profiles. We're going to select B with our selector switch, which is going to take us to our ballistics menu. The first option is going to be gun select. Gun select is going to allow us to manually input up to 30 gun profiles onto the Murph XE. It's also going to select the current weapon that we're using. However, if your gun profiles are stored on your Kestrel, you can actually send them from the paired Kestrel to the Murph XE. In order to do this, in the ballistics menu, we're going to scroll down to manage guns. Once we've selected that, it's going to allow us to select send all or receive all. If we have our profiles loaded on the MRF, then we can send them to the Kestrel. If they're on the Kestrel, we can receive them and put them onto our MRF XE. With our gun profiles loaded and our current weapon selected, now we can actually range the unit. In order to do this, I'm going to take the selector lever and put it on R. Once I've done that, in order to get a range after I've located my target, I'm going to press and hold the center button. After I've done that, the unit is gonna provide me the range to target as well as any corrections that I need to make. The MRF XE is a smaller, lighter, more powerful laser ranging device. Its uncompromising performance, built-in networking capabilities, and onboard ballistic computer give distance shooters the leading edge for faster engagements and maximized lethality. That concludes our overview for the MRF XE. For more information about this and other Wilcox products, follow the links below, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more information about future products.